Hello, and welcome back to Baron's New Vegas Gun Guides. And this time we are going over what is usually the first gun shot by most players, and the first bolt action the player will find, although the pool of bolt actions is very low in this game. We are of course talking about the Varmint Rifle, the first of the rifles, and the first gun given to the player as part of the tutorial in Good Springs. The Varmint Rifle is a purely fictional firearm as far as I know, with no previous games including Varmint Rifles, although they do have similarly chambered 223 hunting rifles. Now a Varmint Rifle is self-explanatory if you can believe it. It is not a gun used by rats and possums, but is instead designed to fire cheap small caliber ammo precisely for getting rid of these varmints. Now the term is American, although they used to be called squirrel guns in the time around the Oregon Trail, but these were muzzle loading rifles. Nowadays the Varmint Rifle is like the one presented in game, a small easy to use rifle with enough weight to almost completely negate any recoil from the smaller caliber. Now the gun in game is actually chambered in a very large cartridge for a Varmint Rifle, 5.56, but since even rats are typically the size of coyotes, I can give it a pass. To give it a bit of history on the action, since we don't see it much, unlike shotguns the invention of the bolt action was not American, but German. The, as I'm soon to be mispronounced, the Natalguer, invented by Johann Nicholas von Drace in 1824, was widely considered the first bolt action even if metal cartridges hadn't been invented. Johann was a man who had been in the firearm industry for most of his life, and his Natalguer was introduced to the Prussian army in 1841, allowing it to dominate infantry battles for nearly a decade, after which the introduction of new models using metal cartridges started to occur across the globe. The M1885 Remington Lee rifle was the first to use a box magazine like the one we see in game, and was the base for the famous Lee Enfield rifle. Now after that point, bolt action rifles stayed at the top of military technology, until the advances of World War I and World War II where bolt actions stayed on only as sniper rifles or designated marksman's rifles, being replaced with automatics. Now, the Varmint Rifle in game is neither a sniper nor a Varmint's rifle, but it can shoot critters. In development, it was a bit different though. As most people might know, the Varmint Rifle was originally supposed to be chambered in 22 long rifle, which would make it a nice normal Varmint Rifle for everyday use. But the damage coupled with the low fire rate was so low that early playtesters marked it as nearly unusable. The choice was then made to make it a 5.56mm gun to justify an increase of damage, but it is a bottom performer of all 5.56 weapons. Despite that, it is still useful in very early game for players who don't take Animal Friend or find a money making scheme since it has a choice of two bulk ammo options and is cheap. It's also probably the longest range option most players have for very little caps in the early game. The biggest benefit, however, is that the courier gets a decent quality one for free, obviously, with some ammo, for the low, low price of making short conversation. But let's look to the stats instead of the history. At 18 damage, the Varmint Rifle isn't winning any awards, dealing only 2 damage more than a 9mm and 4 damage less than a 10mm pistol, the Varmint Rifle is definitely a starter weapon. At a rate of fire of 1.2 shots per second, which is a pretty fast for a bolt action, it has a DPS of 21.9. With the magazine capacity of 5 and a reload of 2.2 seconds, its adjusted DPS is 14.3 seconds. Now, I did lie about going back to history, here we have a little bit more. Back in World War I, users of the Lee infield had a drill where they tried to shoot as many shots on target in one minute, or at least 15 shots on target at 300 yards. If the courier could keep his aim steady, he could shoot way past the world record at 38 hits with the Lee infield, or 39 with modern weapons. The courier can shoot around 46 shots in a minute, and with perks, around 54 shots. But as we will discuss later, that can be increased. In VATS, this weapon is hard to use, or hard to justify, costing 35 AP per shot, which is very expensive, something that is shared for guns with slow actions or big bullets. This gives the Varmint Rifle an efficacy of 0.51 per AP. Now luckily it only has a spread of 0.024, which makes it far more accurate than most guns in the game, which at least means that most of those weak shots will hit. 
As for critical damage, it has a standard 1x multiplier with double damage, which, with sneak crits, makes the varmint rifle capable of hurting a human-sized varmint. Now, there has to be a positive side to this gun, and there is its price, and the fact that it has three mods that are all very cheap. At only 75 cap space, the varmint rifle can be bought for a few nuka colas or a handful of ammo. Most of the time, the ammo cost will eventually exceed the cost of the gun by far. Now, for mods, there are three, and it will be the first set of three mods the players will see. First up is the cheapest at 75 caps, Extended Mags, which changes the mag size from 5 to 8, which is a strange number, but for the price, it's fine. The second mod is the Silencer at 100 caps, which silences the weapon and makes the sneak attack critical build viable in the early game at long range. The third and final mod is the Night Scope, which in the theme of price hiking is 125 caps. This is a unique mod as far as scopes go. Between 6pm to 6am, the scope has a green overlay in it, and the thick lines help in seeing in darker nights, or when you're in dark interiors, it should also activate. It has a 2.86 magnification, which is very short range in real life, but a good medium range in the game. All in the price, the Varmint Rifle can rise to 375 caps, which is half the base value of a 10mm pistol. Like most cheap guns in the game, the Varmint Rifle is a little fragile. At 595 shots of standard ammo, 195 of surplus, 745 of 223 ammo from full condition. All in all, not so bad. As for the ammo, which will quickly become more costly than the gun, standard ammo costs 2 caps per round, so each reload is 10 caps base. But for the cheapscape, there are two options mentioned before. The 223 round is the lower powered version of the 5.56mm, costing 1 cap per round, only doing 90% damage, but only doing 80% damage to the gun. Now, 223 can be bought in bulk boxes, as well as the standard 1 cap per round. But the bulk boxes aren't really a deal at 20 caps for 20 rounds. However, it will be affected by barter modifiers more finely, so you might be able to cut a deal if the price of 223 jumps up. Now, 223 will cost you time in firefights, but for early game economics, it's much, much cheaper and much more available. For the absolute ammo desperate though, there is surplus ammo, which like 22 plinking ammo, is a bargain at 100 caps for 250 rounds of ammo, but it comes at a dire cost. While doing 15% more damage, it wears the gun out 3 times faster, meaning one box lasts longer than the entire varmint rifle, which is good for a throwaway purchase, however. And now we go on to the more usual ammo types. First we have hollow point, which is 4 caps per round, doing the 75% increased damage, but increases the enemy damage threshold by 3 times. And finally we have armor piercing ammo, costing 4 caps per round, it drops enemy damage threshold by 15 points, but only does 95% damage. It does make it quite effective against the armored robots, and it helps the vomit rifle crack open bigger pests in the wastes of the Mojave. Now onto the short list of requirements. There is no guns requirements, and only a strength requirement of 3, which lets it work in the hands of the untrained player or a low level pleb. It has a weight of 5.5, and like the single shotgun, is very heavy for what it is. But now, that is not all. There is a unique variant, the Rat Slayer, located in Brock Flower Cave, which is a radioactive dump cave filled with big rats, appropriately enough. The Rat Slayer is located up on a ledge and seems to be the personal weapon of a scientist that had been experimenting on or observing the rats. The giant rats in this cave are stronger than normal, and with the Wild Wasteland perk, they are renamed Rodents of Unusual Size, or R-O-U-S's, a reference to Princess Pride. The Rat Slayer is a good weapon, dealing 5 more damage at 23, shoots 1.3 shots per second, only costs 33 AP to shoot, it has a spread of 0 0.0225, and has all three mods pre-installed. Additionally, it has a durability of 995 standard shots, which correlates to 329 surplus shots and 1,245 223 rounds. 
But the best feature is the crit percent multiplier, which is five times, which is the highest multiplier for any gun outside the Euclid Sea Finder and the Alien Blaster. This means with crit builds, the Rat Slayer can achieve a much greater damage heights. With some specking into crit chance, the Rat Slayer can always crit, even without the true crime story's effect. The only downside to the Rat Slayer is that its location is around Camp Searchlight, so it is later into the game where players are starting to hit stiffer opposition. With crit builds, it can see some success, but it's near the end of its useful life when 308 starts appearing in larger quantities. Now, before we talk about where to find this beauty, we're going to talk about how you can increase the Courier's Mad Minute. And to start with, there's Fast Shot, which does increase your attack speed by 20%, but does make you worse in vats and does make the gun spread a bit more. So hitting all those targets at that range would be more difficult. And then there's the Level 50 Perk, which is Ain't Like That No More, which does also increase your weapon speed by 20%, but that's about it. And finally, and slightly more obvious, the Rapid Reload, the perk that lets you rapidly reload, does increase your time wasted on reloading, thus increasing your total DPS. Now, where to find one? The first one, as we said before, can be gotten from Sunny Smiles just by talking to her. But Prim's Sheriff Office, the Cap Counterfeiting Shack, Lucky Jim's Mine House, the NCRCF Northwest Tower, Silver Peak Mine in the Shack, Vic and Vance's Casinos on the Safes, and Wolfhorn Ranch all have open models. However, some of those locations are way further into the game than the Varmint Rifle is useful. But with Juggy Rigging, it's a good way to repair bigger guns. Now, Powder Gangers, Recruit Legionaries, Jackal Gang members, and Fiends can carry them, with the only NCR Troopers that carry them being at Prim. Now, being an early game item, almost all weapon vendors will sell it, and in some cases, it'll be cheaper than a repair kit for some weapons. Which brings us to our big conclusion, is that the Varmint Rifle is a variable cost repair kit for other bolt slash lever slash pump action weapons, when you have jury rigging. It can kill geckos, rats, coyotes, small rat squirps, low-level ghouls, and gangers, but quickly stops being enough. The Rat Slinger brings a little bit more life into this gun, but in the end, it's just there to give you an introduction to shooting, and it does a damn good job at it. Thank you for watching.